My name is Embry with the Upside Down A and I have this on my head because I'm about to shoot a video. I wanna start from the beginning, I'll show y'all exactly the process to not just a YouTube video, but any video. We're in my office right now. This is my camera stuff behind me. Um, if y'all want me to do any sort of breakdown on my office equipment, uh, setup, anything like that, just let me know and I will. But right now in this video, we are going to talk about my camera setup to shoot not only YouTube videos, anything. It's, it's quick, it's easy, it's on the go. I'm about to show you exactly how I do things. All right, so this is where my babies stay. And let's build the baby. Boom. All right, I'm about to go get the camera stuff. Put everything right here. After a couple trips in the office, I have all my camera stuff laid out. It's ready to get built. My build doesn't have a lot of signals being sent to other places, so because of that, it's not too much. Let's get into it, Shark. I'll show y'all exactly what I'm talking about. We have all the camera equipment laid out from the camera itself to literally everything it takes to make this work. First, I start with my camera. My camera already has the cage on it. Most of the time, I'll leave this two terabyte drive on. This two terabyte drive is a Samsung portable SSD T5. Uh, two terabyte, like I said, like three times already. Once my CFast card gets full, I start shooting to this hard drive. So that's why I leave this on there. The video doesn't go directly here. Just because the cord that connects this hard drive to the camera can be funny sometimes. So that's the drive. The next thing after positioning the drive in the right place, I usually go ahead and get the bars together at the bottom of the camera. Usually, I'll put these on first and then I'll put it on the camera. And the reason I put the bars on first is because you don't want to get the whole camera on here and then you're worried about making sure these bars are even and doing something like this. Like imagine if the whole camera was having to balance on here while I was building it, which I definitely do sometimes and has happened before, but like you can see it's uneven. Or I hope you can see it's uneven. But like stuff like that, you just it's easier to adjust before the camera gets all the way onto this plate. The way I remember what's front, what's back, I put a cam in the front, nothing in the back. So slide that guy on there. That guy, that gal. Gotta make sure it's unlocked. That's why I was having a little problem getting on. Make sure everything is locked once you get it on there. After putting the rails on there, I usually go ahead and add the B-mount plate. And I add the B-mount plate because it's like, it, it helps stabilize the camera. It keeps the weight down in the back, so it's not super front heavy. By super front heavy, I mean the lens right here. Once I put it on, everything in the front is going to be causing the camera to kind of want to lean forward. You want the front to be about just as heavy as the back. Getting to the lens. I leave everything on my lens and I also put my lenses in the case for the most part. If I'm in a rush, you know, everything isn't always perfectly done. But for the most part, I leave everything on my lens. Always keep, you know, a good microfiber cloth on you. I keep a microfiber cloth in my bag. I keep them in the dust blowing camera cleaning, lens cleaning tape. But you always wanna wipe everything down before attaching something like a lens to your camera. And why? Why do you wanna be this tedious with your lens? Why am I blowing all this dust out? Why am I trying to make sure there's absolutely nothing in between the camera and my lens is because to be able to see, to show a vision, to show a clear video. So you want the eye to be clear. So go ahead and get all that dust out of there, clean it as good as possible. Um, next, I usually put the handle on. You always wanna put this hard drive on before putting this handle on. If not, the handle will be in the way of screwing in the hard drive, but the hard drive is never in the way of screwing in the handle. So hard drive, handle. That way, not having any intrusions on your building process. So once you put everything together, tighten it up, make sure everything's on there tight, 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 tight. Don't want anything loose because the overall build can sometimes, you know, cost some thousands. 5,000 sometimes, 10, 20. The overall build costs a lot. So you, and the individual pieces cost a lot themselves too. So you just wanna make sure everything is good, nice, tight, exactly how it should be. Staying on focusing on this lens, next I'm going to put on my polarizer. Um, so I usually use this polarizer all the time. No matter what, I'm usually shooting with the polarizer because um, 
with skin, you can see the difference. Where did I put that bigger cloth? It helps with not only the sun, the color in the sky, but skin as well. Um, I believe, of course, more glass, more glass means softer. So if you're adding more layers of glass, the skin's gonna get softer. I just, I just had to go ahead and get down here to let y'all know that. But um, now that I've cleaned all that up, um, I can't just put this 77 on this 72. This 77 millimeter base camp piece plate that um, allows me to use this square polarizer or you know square filter holder needs to be applied after putting on a step up or step down ring. This is a step up ring, so it's stepping 72. Basically, we're stepping up from 72 to 77 to be able to allow us to use this base plate, base camp piece, to go ahead and apply it. I don't put on my filters that tight. I just, I don't really believe in it because I've gotten so many filters stuck on step up or step down rings. So I don't really, I don't put my filters on that tight. All right, so next. I was about to get into the monitor, but let's stay on the lens. Next I'm going to add this focus ring so I can have my focus puller. Now today, while I'm shooting YouTube videos, I might not use the focus puller like that, but tonight I have to shoot um, a pop-up event for um, a company called The Smoke Battle and my company, Toka Leaf. So we're having an event, pop-up, me showing up like this gives me the ability to just set it up. Boom, 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 sit there. Yeah, let me go ahead and tell y'all about these rails. So I'm going to move these rails forward and this is another reason why you want rails that are this long for a camera like this. So I have the longer rails versus the shorter rails. Let me get the shorter rails for y'all. These are the shorter rails and the reason that you want to use these long rails versus these short rails. So I believe these are seven inches. If you're going to get rails, Please get the long ones first. If, you are, if you're gonna be having an on-the-go setup with your Black Magic, the reason you want the long ones first is because, look, when I add this focus puller, and I'm putting it out as far towards the edge as possible, like very far towards the edge, fleshed. All right, so this is as far as possible. Y'all see how much space is between that? Look, right here, it's a whole gap, it's a whole gap. So how am I gonna pull focus? It can't even reach, right? So now we have to adjust our bottom rails. This is a little difficult now that everything's on. Um, you can't really turn the knobs past the piece of metal once it gets on, that top piece of metal, the camera. So you have to pull it up Pull it up and off. Flip it around and undo it. So that way, see, super loose. This side is pretty loose. This one makes a full pass, but this this doesn't make a full pass. So, so that you don't have to take everything down, unscrew, do what I just showed you, and yeah. If you loosen up both plates, not both plates, but both sides, they'll be scooting forward together. You just wanna open up both sides. So now look, to tighten this up, having to do the same thing I just did except backwards. So remember, look. Ooh, I'm not holding this as secure as I should. It should be really always be like this, but I'm gonna put this handle against my chest and hold it right here at the bottom. Secure, I wanna always be secure. But see how this isn't loose anymore? It's cause I picked it up, let it set, tighten again, boom. Everything's tight, everything's tight. So. If you would like your camera set up to look a little more organized or together, put this little um, gear ring, flip it around to the bottom, 
and let that excess hang down here. But personally, I don't, I'm not too worried about the appearance of my setup today, more so just trying to get it together so I can go ahead and shoot this video. Next, monitor arm, monitor holder, monitor mount. It has many different names, but I got this one from Small Ray. Or, you know, it has a small rail piece. And I love this because you can adjust the angle, the height, all that. I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all have the Port Keys BM52. Uh, I love the Port Keys because you can operate your black magic with the Port Keys. I will go ahead and give y'all one side note though that they're probably not, this is something Port Keys is probably not going to tell you. Sometimes it doesn't work. That's all I'm saying. Sometimes it doesn't work. I haven't even gotten all the way into my core bag. This is where I keep all my extra stuff that I use often on set or that this camera requires for operation. So I had to go ahead and loosen up this piece right here. It got stuck. I use these small discs. They fit right in the center. Places where a flathead would be needed, this is good. And I feel like this is good because it gives you a lot of leverage and allows you to apply pressure in a different way on here. So, or you know, but in a small different way. Yeah, it's my best explanation. I really love this little piece. This is probably one of the manniest pieces of my whole setup. Need this antenna. I use a smaller antenna because the camera's right here. It doesn't need too much. Um, yeah, let me go ahead and put the small guy back in here. It's always in here. That's always on me when I'm shooting, for the most part. So attach a couple more pieces. Next. So let me just pause before I apply these cords or anything else. This is my camera setup without any cords, not doing too much, don't have too much on it. That's how I like to shoot. Let's get these cords on here so we can turn it on. Right now we can turn it on, but um, nothing else is gonna be powered and the camera's not gonna stay on longer than probably 15, 20 minutes. So before I really do anything, I guess I should get a uh, V-mount. For my camera, I'm usually using one of two, either this Nano 1. I also like the Nano 2, I had the chance to see that in person. I like the Nano 1 because USB-C, mini, and an A port. Not only that, you can read your voltage right there. It tells you how many volts left, how much is being used for what. And it's just really great, I really like it. Next. The Neo 9 Mini Hypercore. I really, really, really love this one for one main reason. And that is because it shows the percentage and how much time is left right there. It's not in volts, it's in hours and minutes. Exactly how the majority of the world reads time. This is an amazing V-mount. I believe you should have both of these. These are both great. It's estimated, but I really love this. Not only that, it shows you the bars on the side four bars, you have a D-tap and a USB-A, and V-mount, of course. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put this Nano 1 on. I usually start with the Nano 1 because the Nano 1 is the smallest and easiest to carry. Let's go ahead and get the rest of these cords on now that we have a solid battery pack. This next is the port keys power cord. One thing, get an extra port keys cord because they separate easily. I do not put my port keys directly into the power supply. I put it on the side of the V-mount. My V-mount has one extra D-tap place. Everything else, everything else is DC out. I have one ad additional DTAP piece. Everything else is DC out. I have some transformers for cords in my bag. I usually use those when absolutely, absolutely needed. So, all right. Boom. It's not super tight, but it's together, it's there. Let's put these extra pieces away so we don't lose them. Get into these cords. This is my cord bag. I mentioned it a couple times throughout this video, but this cord bag holds usually just about everything that my camera is going to need on set or that I'm going to need on set. So, like I told y'all, I have the DC out. This power cord right here is specific to those for my camera. So I have a power cord just in case for whatever reason I need two D-taps that have nothing to do with my camera. But we're gonna go ahead and use the D-tap. This is just for emergencies and that's why it is colorful because it is the emergency cord. All right, so this D-tap right here connects directly to my camera. As you see, my Black Magic does not have any of the pieces on. That is because they are right here in the pocket the all the covers I keep them all right here because I use this camera so much that those things started to get into the way and 
which is so much easier to leave them off. I also pulled the covers off of my V-mount. So my battery covers and my camera covers are not on there. Now, is that the smartest thing to do? No, no, I do not recommend you do this. Me saying all this out loud, I'm probably putting these back on here because I'm a crazy person for doing all of this. Um, usually I put that a little neater. You want it to be a little neater. I wrapped around right there and then plug it in. Um, if another V-mount was on there, I would be plugging it into the D-tap of directly to the battery versus the V-mount. So, so far, the camera now has power, the monitor has power. Let's go ahead and get the camera picture on the monitor screen. So, how we're going to do that is we're going to use an HDMI cord. For the most part, I leave all my main camera cords right here. I do that not only for myself, but for my team. That way, if uh, anybody's ever running over to grab something out of my bag, I can tell them which side it's on, what flap, all that, the exact correct place. So everything's connected so far. And um, honestly, you can shoot like this. Like I said, I keep this on here, but right now I have a CFast card in here. So the CFast card is 512 gigabytes. It can shoot the small stuff that I need. So like if I'm gonna shoot a video for YouTube, you can really just use the CFast card. We can just go straight on there. But let's say if I'm shooting for days and I don't know when the next time I'm gonna dump my car is, I'm probably going to be shooting on that two terabyte. How do I connect that two terabyte? How do I make sure that issue that I told y'all doesn't happen? This is the cord, and we're about to go ahead and put that on the camera. It has two screws to keep things in place, and that is because of what I told y'all. The two terabyte SSD, if it's not all the way screwed in 100% correctly, your stuff is not going to read or write very well. So all of the cords are already on here, so I have some things in the way. For me to be able to get that where I need it to be, I'm going to take this off, lean it right there. If you are around a lot of people, do this step first. Or if you're on set, do this step first. This might make you a little anxious. All right, so I'm screwing it in with my fingers and it's not going anywhere. That's the, uh, that's the issue right there. That's usually it. So to fix that, I use some tools. Let me go grab those tools. This is usually always on me on set because the day I don't bring one of these things, I need it. I always need it. Even, you know, you have those days, it's like, oh, I don't need this, I don't need that, no. The day, the day you don't bring it is always the day you need it. I'm using a flat head to screw this in, a small flat head. I really love this tool kit because you can change the head and still get a lot done. So we have our C fast card on the inside. We have our SSD card on the outside and everything is together. Let me make sure that this HDMI is underneath this, uh, you know, just for organization purposes. But yeah, this is my on the go, let's go shoot right now setup. I'm gonna go ahead and turn everything on for y'all so y'all can see exactly how it works. So boom, here we are. I'm gonna right focus for y'all. Boom. And that right there, I'm about to put it on that right there. So let's get to this point. I need to take this base plate off. This is my base plate for my Manfrotto tripod. I have two quarter inch screws. One goes a little deeper than the other, but both have these handy dandy, easy to turn handles on them. So honestly, probably should have done this first along with our connecting of the SSD, but I'm showing y'all how I build my rig, and sometimes I don't always, I don't always shoot on a tripod. I love handheld. I love tripod, but I love handheld. So nine times out of ten, we're gonna start like this for my sets, and then we're gonna get to this. Unless I'm the only one shooting, then we're going to start with this. This camera right here is heavy. So where is a safe place to set this camera? On the side on which you put your hand, the handle, probably the safest because it's opposed from the side where things are sticking out. The base plate tells you which direction to put it. The lens needs to be on the front, so this is the front. On the bottom, this is a tilted cage, but on the bottom of this tilted cage, we're going to put this Manfrotto plate. And there are one, two, three, four, five different places for uh, mounting. One is a half inch two, and one, two, three, four quarter inches. So one half inch and four quarter inches. We're going to put these quarter inches 
Let me go ahead and show y'all. One half inch right there in the center, and then the four quarter inches. We're going to go ahead and put these two quarter inch screws into this first one and this last one. It has the correct arrow for where the lens goes. So everything's already telling you exactly where it needs and wants to go. This cord's a little in the way. Once we start shooting, it'll be out the way. Thankfully, it's bungee, so I'm just gonna put it just like that. I'm gonna start screwing these in to go ahead and um, get them placed, but I'm not gonna screw them all the way in because my base plate, I'm not sure exactly where I want it to be just yet. You know, we have our handy dandy caveman wheels. That's what I'm gonna call it. We have our handy dandy caveman wheels, so we're gonna pull that out. Locked in. Nice and tight, I'm loving it. Everything looks great. Before I go ahead and put this on the tripod, this is it, this is the setup. Turn everything on, make sure everything's working. You know the V-mount is working because it's turning on. So let's go ahead and get these on here. Get that bad boy on there. Let me know if there's anything you would like to see. Follow me on Instagram, Ambria with the upside down A upside down a and yeah keep up with me let me know if y'all see me one day on set and it's a tv show set or i'm working i'm directing my own music video or directing my own commercial or working on set for anything if y'all want to see the bts if y'all want to get a little more into the world let me know exactly what y'all want to see i hope y'all enjoyed this video subscribe again my name is amber with upside down a um yeah man I'm just hungry for everything I do. I love this and I hope y'all enjoy watching my journey.